show, we were chatting about the fabulous stunts of Evil Knievel. Uh, we had his son on the show some time back and we played the interview. Now, as a result, we got a call from someone who knew, a local stuntman who'd been a bit of a daredevil himself back in the 1980s. Well, we made some calls and the man himself, John Taylor, well, he came forward and said, yeah, that was me. He's been telling me where it all started for him. <laughs> First time I seen Evil Knievel, I think it was about 1974. He was doing the, the jump over the buses at Wembley. Yeah. And as soon as I seen it, I thought, I'm gonna. Do, that's what I want to do. Really? That, I'm gonna do that. How old were you then, John? I was probably 11 years old. Right. Yeah, 11 years. So yeah. with all the hype and the attention, and there you go, you thought, wow, that's for me. Yeah. Yeah. So where did it go from there then? I mean, you, you know, you leave school, you get yourself jobs and stuff like that. Did you always ride a bike? Yeah, I always loved bikes. Even before I seen Evil Knievel, a bike to me was freedom. Right. You know, get on that bike and pedal away and, you know, go as far as I could and come back, you know. Really? <laughs> yeah, I loved them. So yeah. that went on, obviously, into motorbikes when you were of age. And... Yeah, it did, yeah. yeah. I got my first motorbike, um, my first stunt motorbike when I was, well, I could only get it when I was 18. Mm. And it was a Suzuki 250RM. Quite fast bike, yeah. Wow. £2,000. So did you do stunts on that? When I was 18, I, I broke a world record up in um, Walton, Walton Manor, Hillfoot. Right. 125-foot uh, uh, wall of fire. That went OK. Uh, there was two attempts on that one. The first one I came off, <laughs> Jordan Lee, you know, the, the run-up one, if you like. Yeah. Uh, but I got back on and, and done it. successfully did it, yeah. Then um, I think it was the next year, 1982, uh, Eddie Kidd done a, a jump for a film called Riding High. The fire ducked over the river Blackwater down in Essex. Yeah. So I thought, well, I can do that one, but I've got to do it differently from the way he's done it. Yeah. Uh, so we did do it differently. We, we travelled down there, three of us in the van, got there late at night. We set up early in the morning, and the way I did it differently was just by wearing a pair of jeans and a t shirt, no helmet, no safety landing gear. It was a jump that was done with no helmet. Which is dangerous, isn't it? Well, it was, yeah. Uh, but uh, the way I was seeing it at the time was if you make it short, the helmet's not going to do you any good anyway. But this, the block of flat stuns, I mean, when the lad rang up and said, does anyone remember the lad doing that? I remember the, the picture that was in the paper. Yeah, yeah. Now, it was over three blocks of flats. You went from one, missing out the middle one and landing on the third one, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. So how did you set it up? Was it all above board? Did you did you set it up late or just get up and do it? No, well, what it was, on the day, um, because of the previous stunts that I'd, I'd already done, mm. uh, you know, you kind of got to go one step further, you know, all a little bit different from the last one, yeah. So the idea was I, I went out in the car and I drove up the motorway towards Manchester and what I was going to do was jump the eight lanes of the motorway from one field, you know, to another. Yeah. On a Sunday morning, you know, when yeah. there's no traffic and that. I know it, was, it would have been illegal at the time, but that was what I did. It, you know, that's what we did. Uh, but I got lost in the process, and I end, ended up coming back through the Netherly area. Hmm. And I seen all these high-rise derelict flats. Never even knew they were there, you know, but they were all empty, ready to be demolished. So I was thinking, OK, this will be a good one, this, if I can jump from one to the other. Um, but looking around, you couldn't really jump from one to the other because they were too close and at the wrong angle. But there was a set of three, and this is the, the one that I did, you know, where you, in order to, to make this jump, you had to clear the middle, the, the middle building, yeah. Now, the third building was roughly 30 feet smaller than the other two, the one I took off and the one I'd gone over. So the height that I'd gained and the height I had to drop, it was about 60 feet onto solid concrete, doing about 75 miles an hour. And it, did, it didn't land good. You didn't land well, did you? No, it didn't. The, the bike bottomed out. Uh, my back took the rest. So the bike just fell away from you? Yeah, yeah. It didn't go too far away, though, because there was a 12-inch paraffin pit on the top of the roof. I know. Which actually saved me from falling off, because I'd fallen into that. Good. Yeah. And there's a few friends on that roof as well. That didn't take it quite good at the time. It was a bit of an experience for them, you know. When you were on, on your way down, have you got clear memories thinking, yeah. this is this has gone wrong? No, I remember, I, I knew I was going to hurt myself on this jump, you know. I knew I was going to hurt myself, but not sure how much. You know, if I had the thought it was going to break me back in three or four places and ankles and ribs and everything else, I, I wouldn't have done it, you know. 
Uh, I remember landing, and it's the, the second I landed, and I felt you know the pain was tremendous. You know, really? felt like every organ had fallen off its hold and and splattered to the ground. Oh. I felt the break, the snap in me back. And then all of, all of a sudden, it was just complete darkness. You know. I mean, did you tell your family you were going to do this? No, no, maybe uh, my brother, but not my mum or no. people. Well, see, it's really hard to get your blessing off your, uh, <laughs> off your family doing this stunt like yeah, this. Yeah, well, my mum wouldn't be happy, you know. No, uh, absolutely yeah. not. So, what, how long did it take you to recover? I was in hospital for two days, yeah. but they wanted me in for a few weeks. Yeah. But, you know, being me at the time, I signed myself out of hospital, got a taxi, went home, laid up for a while. And trying to work out how I'm going to get myself ready again, you know, because I knew it damaged me back pretty bad, but, you know, I was walking, and, and that was the main thing with me. And I just had to make myself better, just keep on the go and don't drool on it too much, really. Well, and you've still got one or two weeks in pain to this day, to remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, that time. yeah, yeah, it's still there. Yeah. It's never going to go away, the, that like. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I have my ways of dealing with it. Did you know straight away that was the end of the line, then? That's it, no more bike. Yeah, I did. I've learned my lesson. Yeah, I did. I, I knew. Yeah, you're right. Um, at that time, I thought this has gone too far. You yeah, know, definitely, I'd gone too far now. But you know, I did go back out in 1999. I went to Selport Beach with my new bike. I set up a jump and came off again. Did you? And done another vertebrae. And yeah. Didn't you make a documentary recently about this? Yes, um, a guy called Casper Strack and his partner Gabriel, European filmmakers, uh, connected to the fact. Yeah, um, the fact cinema, yeah. Fact cinema, yeah. Um, put it an appeal out on Pete Price really? uh, a couple of three years ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Looking for people with maybe an interesting story, you know, to tell. So I was thinking, I wonder if they want to know about the, the one over the flats, because, wow. you know, it's an interesting one, I thought. It is, yeah. Well, I, I called them up and they couldn't wait to get me down there, you know. So I left all the narration with them and they went away and did the, the film and the, the archives and put that together. So and, there is footage of this, is there? Yeah, but the way they've done it is um, they've kind of p pictures and moving pictures and then when you see the crash, it, it cuts off because there is no footage now of the crash. So what they've done is they've inserted Evil Knievel coming off on the bus, is funny enough. Really? Yeah, so it kind of looks like a, a, a one jump, you know. No, when you look back, well, how do you feel about it? Is it something like you, you feel like you achieved something there, or it was something you needed? You said I know you said you needed to do it for your own peace of mind in a way, but do you have fun memories of it, or is it painful to look back? Well, it's both. <coughs> it's painful and fun, and on balance. I found out, I don't know, through the eighties that anything that was good was happening. You know, it was always mm. something bad happens as well, uh, but only brought on by myself. Interesting guy, you know. I mean, you, you know, the hype of Evil and Evil and stuff like that took him along to a few stunts, and uh, unfortunately, that one in Netherly didn't go well at all. Um, he actually hit the third one, it was 30 feet lower than the other two. But, you know, I know I don't really need to say this, but don't try anything like that on a motorbike because, um, you know, it's um, you've got to sort of know what you're doing. But uh, it was good to get older, John. It was, it was a headline that stuck in my mind for a long time. Uh, in the 80s about that lad who'd done all them stunts and there he was on BBC Radio Merseyside. Good morning, Sean.